All righty, so let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, if I suddenly leap off uh, and have you guys kind of self-facilitate for a minute, it's because I am expecting momentarily uh, my phone call back from Kathy Elson at the MLS, uh, my, my conversations with the, with the com other compliance people seemed to indicate that my version of this was, uh, was correct in that you can't say that we can have virtual showings or physical showings and then tell us we have to take properties off the market if they're denied a physical showing if they won't follow the, the rules that we've set out because virtual showings are still available. So uh, no one was willing that I've spoken to so far, no one was willing to hang their job on that interpretation. Uh, and Kathy has been unavailable to me. So I, have, I do have her kind of calling me ASAP. And if that happens before we finish, I am just gonna step out to go to war for you on that and then step back in. So if that happens, just, just self-facilitate. It's just, we're just having a conversation around leads. Um, what you guys are doing, uh, any questions that people have. <clears throat> so if that's, uh, if that's all right with you, I'm gonna keep my phone on and be distracted by it just in case it's Kathy Elson. No problem. Cool, thank you for that. All right, so, uh, so the whole idea of this afternoon is really, again, just to kind of conduct a, a, a simple discussion around where, where are people finding leads? Where, where are your leads coming from? on the list side, where are your leads coming from on the buy side? Have you found things to work better for you? Are you proactively searching someplace? Are things just kind of showing up uh, and, and where might they be showing up? Those kinds of things. Um, and so before we, uh, before we cruise on, I just want to <clears throat> make sure that everyone knows um, who we have on the line today. And those are uh, ALC members from both the Ridgefield and the Stanford Market Centers. Uh, across the board in no particular order as I see them uh, are Chris DiBiase, wave Chris, and Diane Del Vecchio, and Dan Lydon, and Kim Kendall, who's hiding the pot in the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for, um, for taking some time to, uh, to chat with us today. We always appreciate the opportunity to kind of pick your brains and mastermind with you. <clears throat> uh, and so again, this is not necessarily Rick talking to these panelists. Uh, if you guys have questions for uh, these panelists, just unmute and, and uh, let us know what your questions are. But we thought we would get started with just a couple of um, kind of basic seated questions with regards to where are you finding leads right now? Um, Guys, you don't have to necessarily provide an answer on both the list side and the buy side. If you have a stronger answer on one side, then, then feel free to uh, kind of pass on one side and dive in on the other. Again, uh, informal is the name of the game here. So um, what are you finding your best sources of, let's start on the listing side, just because why not? Uh, what are you finding your best sources of listing leads are at present? I mean, I, I'm not a very uh, heavy lister. Um, However, just looking at the listings I have and the listing appointment I have today, um, they've all come from referrals. Um, it's really just being out um, active on Facebook. One of them is expired that I talked to three years ago that now is just listed again. Um, and then referrals, fear is my biggest, I mean, that's gonna be what I'm gonna say about buyers too. <laughs> and so if, if you're if you're banking on the on the sphere Dan, especially on the list side what are you doing for or with the sphere that's creating those opportunities yeah I mean um, I think that's the name of the game is, is what what are you doing with your sphere um, for any of it uh, a lot of it is um, just coming from contribution I had the, the one I'm putting on now um, he's like, oh, you know, I've been hearing that a lot of New Yorkers are going to be coming up here. Do you think it's a good time to sell? And then just going over the data. Um, I think a lot of people right now are a little worried about he said, she said, kind of what's going on. Like, um, so presenting the data in a very easy way to, for them to see what's going on. You know, listings are down. Prices are actually up in a lot of uh, markets um days on market are down all of those kind of things take into account and just give them a visual 
Um, whether that's putting it on Facebook, um, reaching out to old leads and saying, hey, this is a really good time. Have you thought about it? Um, it's been very uh, influential having that visual. Definitely. Um, I would say for me, uh, my database has been, for, for listing and buyers, um, has really been key. Um, also circle prospecting for listings because, um, you know, just calling people, you just never know. I mean, you could get a hang up or you could get a listing. So I'm, you know, it's a crap shoot. And um, I've been tapping into my New York contacts. I have, I have a pretty big database in New York. So um, really talking to them on, on the listing side about, you know, now is the time maybe to, um, you know, now is maybe the time to list. And also on the buy side, it's like, do you know anybody who wants to get the heck out right now? And, you know, I'm here. So, uh, you know, there's, there's that. Excellent. What else? Um, for me, it's, it's kind of a combination of everything. It's a combination of um, agent referrals, up nest, effective agents, um, um, Zillow, past clients, friends. I mean, it's, they're coming from all different places, but I'm finding that being positive and, and more than anything, response time is huge because I feel like people are, they want to go, 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 you know, especially the ones coming in and it just, I mean, my days are long, like 14 hour days right now. And it's, I'm constantly in touch with them. And I'm focusing on all my A people right now, just to build my immediate pipeline. I know I need to focus on my Bs and my Cs, but I'm primarily focusing on my As. But, um, and, and kind of, you know, what Dan said, just kind of talking the language and keeping it upbeat and positive, because I think people kind of know what the market's doing. We don't even have to tell them, they see it. You know, especially the ones that mark, that watch it, they know it's busy. They, they, you know, they're curious about buying or selling. They see houses go on and then under deposit. And just reinforcing that, that it's an amazing time to A, buy or, or sell encourages the conversation to take the next step. When you say response time is huge, Kim, can you talk a little bit about that? What do you mean by that? Well, so I, I, I do buy into Zillow. Um, and I've gotten quite a few leads. I know you don't like it. Not for long though. That's one of my goals is to dump them, Dan. Um, I've gotten a lot of opportunities for people who, you know, want to come up and, um, you know, want to know how is the Connecticut market. Um, now, granted, many of them are not pre-approved, whom I will not waste my time and, and take out. But I think just capturing them and if they're not pre-approved well get them in touch with somebody and get them you know to start receive listings based on what they they think that will get pre-approved for and then just the follow-up um and then as far as you know the the sellers it's just constantly being on top of them and connecting and and you know if you know their neighbor just listed or um things like that it, rather than oh shoot i forgot to call them or i got to call them tomorrow it's just like immediately you know and i respond to you know emails and texts all day and night long unfortunately but i find that it's helping me stay busy so it's the hustle you know got you gotta it. hustle you have to hustle in this market and if or you'll sink so mm -hmm. i don't think too much has changed um in this market for lead generation um, besides the fact that people are a little bit more wary of the economy of what's happening. Um, so I, I know Kim mentioned that people see it and they know what's happening in the market. Um, however, I don't think they always trust that, you know, I'm getting a little bit of a, is this really happening kind of question? You know, what it, are New Yorkers really coming out to Connecticut? Um, and having data to back that up has been, um, I think response time is, is perfect, but also, knowing what you're talking about um, when you respond is, is huge. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get to that, that whole New York thing um, as an entire topic in just a, in just a second. Uh, Chris, anything to add to the, to the listing lead side? So I, I'm like Dan, very buyer heavy. Um, so I, I'm probably not, not the best to speak on the list side, but I, I, you know, I totally agree with, Kim on response time. You got to be fast. You got to be hungry and out there hustling. 
And when that phone rings, you got to pick it up and you got to smile and have energy. You got to know, let them know that you're there to serve and you're going to do whatever it takes to, to do the job. Awesome. And while you have the mic, why don't you start, why don't you talk a little bit about the buy side? Where, where are you finding buyers, uh, best source of buyer leads right now? So my two main sources are Zillow and sphere of influence. Um, so Zillow has been huge. It's basically how I started off last year. It gave me the jump start I needed. And, you know, I just like, I took it, invested in it and ran with it. Said, I'm gonna put an uncomfortable amount of money behind it that made me actually have to do the work. Otherwise I'd be freaking pissed. <laughs> so I picked up every phone call, you know, followed up with people, kept banging on those doors and it, it paid off for sure. And then the sphere of influence, just talking to people like, immediately around me. So when I had my full-time job, everybody that I worked with knew I was in real estate and this is what I'm doing. So I think I sold like four or five of them houses and referrals are coming from that and it's just, it's just growing. I do. I, I give Zillow a lot of uh, hard time. However, I'm my third referral coming from my original Zillow lead uh, happening right now. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying anyone go out and get Zillow leads. There's better ways to do it, but I also think that, you know, Zillow, my Zillow leads is not just from what, what I pay for, but what I, my reviews. I mean, I just listed a house with Jen in uh, Bethel in one day, you know, 15K over asking. It took us like two hours of work <laughs> and they read one of our 540 reviews and uh, no competition. You got the listing. I mean, I made a ton of money off of Zillow because of my reviews, a ton. So if, if you don't use Zillow for buying, their, buying um, you know, into their leads, definitely you take advantage of them to get your reviews because I've made a massive amount of money off of Zillow that way. While we're on that topic, um, when you do have a listing, you can go in and change the uh, description to have it be like, put a little asterisk or whatever, call official listing agent, uh, Debbie or at your phone number, email address. Um, so it's literally in the description that they're going to read the description because buyers want to do that. We don't really, but, um, and they're going to call you because you are the official listing agent that they're going to want it. They think they're going to get a deal working with you. Um, so you can capture that lead much better. And Dan, you're doing that through KWLS? Nope. I just go right through Zillow. You edit it right in Zillow. Yep. Okay. But, and I believe you can do it through KWLS as well. I would have. You can, but I don't want to mess around with any of that. That I've had issues with it syndicating to other websites, not the correct way. So um, I, it's just easy going through Zillow and doing it. Good. Good. I also, um, I've been tapping into my network of New York agents because a lot of them are losing clients to Connecticut. So I've gotten a couple of referrals. However, what's been happening is some of these people are in a big hurry and they feel like they have to make a lot of calls. So uh, several of them, when I did call the clients, and that's within an hour of getting their name, um, they were they they were like, well, we we've already made made arrangements. So I think if you're going to reach out to New York agents, let them know that you know time is of the essence, and to get like something pretty quickly because we both lost out. And the other thing I've been doing is, you know, Tammy had mentioned the 10% down for second homes. And I've been calling a lot of people and telling them about that. And there's interest there. They're kind of like, wow, that's kind of cool. So again, you know, it's providing an item of value to them. And it's also, you know, if they have somebody or if they do want to maintain a second residence instead of just staying in the city. So. Yes, that's a, that's a great specific script, the whole second residence script, right? To help them understand that, that there's an opportunity for them to, uh, to not necessarily have to give up what they have, but maybe live in both, live in, sail in both ponds for a little while until things, uh, until things calm down. Right. Any other specific scripts that you guys are using uh, to either find or convert leads? Anything you find yourself saying over and over again that would be helpful? I mean, I just assume they're my client. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, Chris and Kim probably do the same with their uh, Zillow leads coming in, but it's okay. We're going to go see these properties once you get pre-approved, um, you know, and, and it's just do with the buyer's console or listing console, 
you know, I, there's no question in my mind that I'm going to get that buyer and get that listing and they're yeah. my clients. I mean, I, I, and the phone I asked is, you know, normally the same couple of questions and obviously are you pre-approved? Are you working with another agent? So if it's a yes and then a no, that's great. And then, you know, time frame, right? What, what's their motivation? And then, you know, uh, I take it from there, but I try to get them on something, whether it be my Boomtown website or, you know, maybe there's a better time we do the full on buyer consult. Um, and then, you know, if I, if I pass them off to Jen and Rap, they do the same thing. So we try to get as much information, even in that, that first phone call to really know and, and, um, you know, send them your contact card through your phone, you know, just, just get them everything as fast as you can with as much information as you can just to make that connection. And if, if we're talking about buyers now, you got to make sure you're sending them listings within a half an hour of getting off the phone because you know, they're, they're looking. And if it's a, if it's a cold lead that you just got, they're looking other places. So it's again, what Kim was saying, the first person to get them listings that are interesting to them. So making sure they're not looking for a one bedroom, they're looking for a three bedroom, making sure you're sending three plus bedrooms and they hate pools. Don't send them all with pools, all of that kind of normal, like sense, common sense stuff. Um, but you got to get it to them right away. And if not, let them know. Like if it's eight eight o'clock at night and you're not out at a restaurant because we don't have those right now, um, say, yeah, I'll, I'll get it first thing in the morning, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what what Kim and Dan both said are totally perfect about pre-qualifying questions and getting that search out like immediately. Like I'll I'll, hang, I'll pre qualify and um if you want to talk about a specific script, I say uh, in regards to if they're working with an agent, I say obviously since you're searching on Zillow, I'm assuming you're not working with an agent, correct? Because if, if they are, they shouldn't be searching on Zillow. I literally have this one person that has an agent. She keeps calling me, and I'm like. <laughs> you really have an agent? Like, why are you searching on Zillow? Like, you understand this is not how it should be, correct? <laughs> and I'm just like, so I'll pre-qualify and I'll literally get off, set up their MLS search. And in that, you know, automatic like verbiage it puts, I'll erase like the first line and put it something specific about our conversation and they have it within 20 minutes. And now they're getting dripped on. Get them into your ecosystem as fast as possible. Your lender, your attorney, you mm -hmm. know, your, your listings, your app. Home snap, whatever you're going to use. Yeah, that's Can you say that again, Dan? Get them into your ecosystem. So I'm a big uh, ecosystem guy now that um, I'm starting to get leads and very, very good ones um, from my ecosystem of financial advisor, attorney, you know, lender. Um, I have my inspectors all lined up. So I know that also this is just for transactional stuff. Um, they know that there's something on the line if they mess up <laughs> because I could take my business away from them. Uh, so my last couple big sales that I have under contract, thanks Kim, um, <laughs> um, were basically from my sphere and from my spheres or my ecosystem sphere. Um, you know, it, it's very important and I give them business, not just my own, but I refer them out to everyone I can. Yeah, quick, quickly to add to that, not just get them into your ecosystem, but immediately into your CRM because you, oh. you need to have that right in front of you every single day. That goes without saying. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't use it. It's, you know, it's crazy to think, but. I literally just got uh, today a buyer request and it's from Zillow from uh, three or four years ago that I want to go see properties because they've been on the drip campaign. See? Mm -hmm. nice. That's not because of Zillow. That's because of the drip campaigns. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to admit it that Zillow's okay. <laughs> Zillow's not good. They're they're looking to destroy your industry. Not gonna happen. Buyer leads so, through command. Um, through command um, ads have also been good. Um, you know, some of them don't put the conversation, and I get that. But you know, I I've had some viable conversations with people. Yeah, I, I see command ads as, uh, you know, almost worse than Zillow. Um, not in the, the sense of they're an evil empire, but just on conversion rates, it's going to be a numbers game. You know, I'm expecting less than one in a hundred to actually convert. Um, however, I want them in my ecosystem again, 
right. they're getting drips, they're getting, um, you know, email drip campaigns, they're getting listings, they're getting the neighborhood nurtures, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Exactly. Uh, because for some reason they clicked on your ad showing a property in an area that they're probably going to be looking at or living in at right. some point. Right. And it's an easy way, you know, I mean, you're not technically not doing anything to get them. So it, to put them on a drip campaign, to call them and, and do all that, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not a lot. It's, it's easy. It's a lot when you have a lot of leads though. Yeah, that's true. It's funny. I, one of the things that, that I've noticed of late is I, I've taken a different angle at how I view those Facebook, those command Facebook leads. I'm not, I don't really look at them as let's find a, a command Facebook lead to go out this weekend, right? I look at it as it, it's really more database building so that you're building, build, you're building a pipeline of opportunity for yourselves for the next six to 12 months, not necessarily the six, six to 12 days. You, you, may, you may hit the lottery on, on you know, a couple every once in a while, but for all intents and purposes that th those bring the masses to me hardly ever works like that. It's, it's really more about building your pipeline for, for the future, which you need anyway, right? So eventually it starts to catch up and you'll start having those convert while you're continuing to build the, the pipeline for the future. So definitely, uh, definitely don't give up on that. I know personally, um, you know, one of my leads came in, at, I think six or 108 leads. Like I just, I need a system for those leads. And I know like, I think Rick, you're, you're right on with that, that it's not gonna be a, a today buy, it's gonna be a six months, year, two years down the road, mm -hmm. that they've been on your campaign, looking at your emails, doing whatever. So having the system or the model set up um, and provided for you to do that um, mm -hmm. is huge. And what are you using, so you guys brought up, uh, well, before I get there, uh, just to close that conversation, the, the I think a recognition of that is what saves you from frustratingly stopping gathering those leads, right? Because I, I've had a lot of conversation in the last six or eight weeks since we've been kind of more and more of us are putting our, our, um, our foot on the pedal of, of those Facebook ads. The conversation is always, well, but I haven't gotten anyone to buy a, buy a house yet, right? And I think if you have those, if you have the expectation that what you're doing there is, filling your pipeline and building a database instead of finding someone to buy a house this weekend, you'll keep going. And then when, and then be, be pleasantly surprised if someone raises their hand and says, I'm ready sooner than, than you think, rather than the other mindset of this is my path to, you know, fame and fortune and riches in the next 30 days. I also <laughs> see it as it might not be directly through me that I'm getting that lead. However, if I'm advertising listings, that listing, that person might be clicking on it and going to their agent and then they're showing the property too. So um, it does also benefit that. Yeah, definitely more, definitely a listing um, tool as well. <clears throat> so make sure you're using it as that. So you guys brought up command. Let's, let's talk a little bit about command. How, how are you using command to either work the leads or automate the follow-up? You know, what, what, how are you using it and what kind of results are you, uh, are you seeing? I've been putting people on neighborhood nurtures and smart plans. Um, I've been sending out smart plan flyers or um, emails. Um, the neighborhood nurtures are always great because then people can look at them and you can tell when people are looking at those nurtures and you know, when you go through, so, you know, that's somebody you might want to pay more attention to than somebody who, you know, obviously disconnects and, and chooses not to receive anything. So that's really, you know, a lot of the things I've been doing and, you know, does the whole design smart plans, um, you know, works really well. Pages also. I find designs is a little clunky right now. Um, and it doesn't always work correctly. And my word of wisdom for that is if you're using it and it's not working right, stop. <laughs> don't waste, don't waste more time on it. Um, just come back later. Um, you know, making the single page or single property landing pages is super easy. I'm using those for all of my Facebook ads through command. Um, sending out emails with those, just trying to funnel as much to that site. Um, I do have to build out my web, my personal website even more. It's pretty bad right now, actually. Um, I am kind of frustrated that we don't have uh, automated searches coming out yet. Um, I think that's a huge hole we have in command that needs to be filled soon. 
because uh, you have to do a double entry into the MLS right now, and that stinks. Um, but yeah, everything else is, is through command. Got it. And I'll tell you, one of the things I learned by listening to Marty Miller each morning was exactly what Dan just said, is that, is that if, you're, if you're pushing buttons in command and something's spinning or not working, don't keep sitting there pushing the button harder and getting irritated by it. Go do something else and come back in 20 minutes, right? Or come back in an hour or like, and, and cause you see Marty kind of doing that all the time while he's showing us on the, on the videos, right? And so if you click this button over here, hmm, well, that seems to be hung up right now. So let's go over here and do this and like not, a, not a big deal. So remember, this is still a system that is, uh, that is functional and being built at the exact same time. So don't, don't make it a, a drama, move on from it and then just and come back. Thank you. Oh. What? <laughs> I'm totally back for you, Diana, you a push button person? Yeah, that was totally me. <laughs> That's right. Diane keeps texting me saying, I broke another computer because I pushed the buttons too often. <laughs> I'm actually getting a new computer for, because mine is just freezing, so. <laughs> What else? What about, so, so I heard neighborhood nurtures, I heard smart plans, smart plan flyers. Anything else that, that we haven't talked about in the past that you're using to automate things for your? Yeah, I want to touch on smart plans for a little bit longer here um, because I'm actually making my own now. Um, they're not the sexiest thing out there. However, um, for recruiting, I've started to recruit in other areas now. And, you know, unlicensed people, licensed people, they're getting an email saying, hey, this is Dan Light and whatever. Um, and you can actually build out, you know, you get a welcome email, then you get a text message, then you get a, a phone call, which I don't uh, recommend unless, unless you're actually going to do it. Um, <coughs> another text message, another email, and just have it restart or go on to a, um, just a, another smart plan that is going to say, Hey, how's it going? You know, I, I hope to stay in touch or something like that. Reach out when you need me. Um, they're not great looking emails because you can't change the fonts and the, you can't put pictures in it or anything. <clears throat> um, but they're better than nothing. And, um, I am starting to see some people convert from that. Awesome. Anybody else using smart plans or customizing those smart plans? Yes, I found out the hard way that you cannot attach images to the smart plan, but um, you can attach, um, you know, links to go to something else. So, um, you know, if there's no, no photos, you can do that. Yeah, you just build out another landing page through command for it. Yeah, and so if there's anybody on this call today who is listening to this conversation and has absolutely no idea what we're talking about, you've got to get yourself to, uh, to class and dive back into some of the, the YouTube uh, classes that, we've, that we recorded from the last nine or 10 weeks. Because the, the, at this point in time, not having smart plans, smart plan flyers, landing pages, neighborhood nurtures, if that's, if that's a language you don't understand, you, you're, you're way behind. And so, so you, you really need to catch up and dive in and that's not to freak anybody out and it's not to say that you haven't been doing what you should be doing. All I'm saying is at this point in time, you, you're, it's not just about not using a tool. You're literally starting to get left behind everybody else as, as we continue to move forward. So really dive into those things if you don't know what they look like um, and ask, contact your team leaders if you need some assistance in, in securing some education time and we'll make sure that that gets, uh, gets on, the, on the books for you. Right, and really I'm going, cool. oh, sorry. Go ahead, oh, I'm going to go on record by saying I am not the most technical person by far. And, you know, it's been a struggle for me to learn all this. And productivity coaching has been really great. Leverage Out has been really great in terms of helping with certain things, either the, the courses they've done or paying for it or, and, and, you know, even doing, you know, certain classes. So take advantage of that because you know, I mean, from when I came here to Keller Williams to now, it's night and day, and I'm still like really far behind, so. And before you go bother everyone, um, just Google it. There's so many things in KW Connect. There's yeah. webinars daily from KWRI. There's just so much information out there. Um, 
that you don't need to always be bothering uh, Jackie or Jen or, or someone else to do a little research first. Um, and I will say it's so nice seeing the neighborhood nurtures evolve where now they're having more and more information, not just on the listing side of stuff, but about the neighborhood. Um, it makes it, it's very easy for you to have that good marketing and not have to do anything about it. So if you start by today, any new leads coming in, put them into command, put them on the neighborhood nurtures, put them on all that stuff. And then you set it and forget it. You don't have to change the neighborhood nurtures unless they want a different area. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. And to Dan's point, don't forget that, that Marty Miller, I mean, we, we do that every single morning for a reason. And he probably spent five or six mornings on smart plans. He, he, I don't know if we've done neighborhood nurtures yet, but the, the, the idea is when you hear Dan say, go and do some research, besides all the KWRI stuff, you can simply go to YouTube and, and Google Marty Miller's 66 day challenge with a, with a smart plan um, piece inside there. And, and it'll return the five or six of those that he did. So you can just kind of walk through those again, whether you saw it uh, when we play it or, you're going to sit and do it again so you can actually push the buttons while he's pushing the buttons. <clears throat> There's tons of information out there and lots of places for you to dive into it. <clears throat> so we talked about a little bit about, about New York before, and I'm, I'm just, I'm curious from the four of you, uh, what are you seeing so far, right? I, I mean, the, the idea of, I think Dan said before, uh, you know, pe people kind of want you to prove it. Uh, you know, this, this big surge from New York. And I, I'm not sure that we can prove it yet, right? Because simply because we don't, we don't have the rear view mirror um, yet. And yet, what are you guys experiencing? Is that New York surge real? Is it a surge? Is it a trickle? Uh, how are you paying attention to it? And are you doing anything specific to try and take advantage of it? I would say it's between a trickle and a surge. I'm not ready to say it's a surge first, but people want to get the heck out of New York. They don't want to be um, in elevator buildings. If they're, they stay in New York, they want to be in walk-ups because they don't want to interact with people. Um, things that were negatives, um, like terraces in the city, people want them now, especially since they couldn't go out for like a couple of months. Um, and I feel that people, when all is said and done with the costs of living in the city, these are people who necessarily did not necessarily want to leave because they wanted the lifestyle. And now that they don't have the lifestyle, it's like, why not go to the suburbs or go to a smaller city like Stanford or whatever. So that's what I'm seeing, hearing, you know, because a lot of my database is New York. A lot of my friends and people are, are their family. So. Interesting. What else? Um, I'm, I'm seeing New Yorkers come up, but wanting um, like vacation homes, weekenders, not really making the move move, but having the getaway place. Like I've showed a couple uh, lower end direct waterfronts, um, things like that. You know, then asking about the Airbnb, um, you know, Dan, is that your, is your client buying? Yeah. Literally yeah. just looking up some information for Tim and I have a deal together. Um, He's not a New York guy, but he is a, a more of a city guy looking for a getaway because he doesn't want to be around his, you know. And and they have the money. I mean, you know, for for Danbury, our median price points like three dollars or something. <laughs> 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 to say say I don't even know what it is. Three low threes, but you know these guys coming up are, you know, five, six, seven, eight plus hundred thousand dollars. So. Um, the ones I have encountered are looking for m more of that second home um, rather than the 100% move. I also think I'm seeing, um, uh, in, I, I could be way off on this, but the people that are coming out do have a higher end budget. Um, one of my buyers coming from Brooklyn, it, we're in a contract track for a 1.1 mil. Um, and that was multiple offers and talking to the listing agent. She's like, yeah, we're seeing a lot of New York people come out this way. Um, because they are also, we're seeing the, the model of this, exactly this, of working from home being proven where, um, they're going to be commuting once, twice a week. So they don't mind taking a, a train from Fairfield for an hour and 15 minutes. If it means they get a backyard and a nice downtown and all the things they liked in the city just spread out. Um, you know, once they get past the, I, I don't, and maybe I'm wrong, but the, the hustle and bustle of the city isn't attractive to me. It never has been. 
but having good restaurants and, and good bars and all that is attractive. And a lot of these coastal towns have it. You know, Fairfield's great, Milford, um, you know, Darien, yeah, all of them really. Yeah, it's interesting because when you think about uh, when you think about what Dan just said, the idea that people seem to be that the people we're seeing come out first might have more money, which which kind of makes sense, right? Because people who do have more disposable income can make some kind of change faster if they're feeling like now is the time to make a change, <clears throat> whether it be a second home because there's there's the the money to buy the second home, or if they're actually making the move. Uh, to, to to sell whatever they have in New York and, and pop on up here. So that, that does make sense to me that, that people with more money would be first and people with less money would, would come a little later as they kind of figure out the job thing, figure out, do I have enough to live someplace else? You know, should I stop renting here in the city? How, what could I afford in, on the other side? There's, there's people with like a, a middle range income, um, need to take a little more time to plan this kind of move rather than people who have upper tier incomes who can can jump a little faster. That's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. May I share a quick observation or I'm not allowed to speak? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I, um, I looked up the 1 million to 1.3 market in Stanford and last week, not but the week before, four properties were sold and all four of them were with a swimming pool. That's what I noticed. Mm -hmm. so, so we're seeing a surge of New York swimmers, what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Millionaire New York swimmers. So target your Facebook ads there. Yeah. I mean, I, I also, the, the few that I've met um, don't really know where they want to live. So, you, you know, it's like, well, within two hours of the city. I'm like, well, I don't travel within two hours of the city. So it's trying to help them narrow down, uh, you know, a couple towns, even if it's it, they're in two opposite directions and you can refer them to the towns you don't cover. But I mean, I have people that want to see in New York and you can't show in New York. So, and they don't understand why, because I can see in Connecticut. And, um, but the couple that I've met have really big, like they have no clue where they want to live. So you have yeah. to help them figure that out or you're going to be driving all over creation, which right. I'm not really willing to do. It's interesting because that kind of screams to me, we, we, want, we, we know where we don't want to be right now and we have no idea where we actually want to yeah. be right now. It's kind of a flight um, mentality of I'm, I'm going to leave here as long as I'm going this way or this way and it's out of here that you know that that'll work for me. Oh. So truly helping them narrow things down and understand right. a where they can get the best bang for their buck. <laughs> B if it's important for them to have you know hustle and bustle. Well, you're going to have more hustle and bustle in certain places. Then you, know, right. you probably don't want to move to Reading if you're looking for hustle and bustle. Right. right. If you want, if you want restaurants and bars, you know, all those things that we've been talking about, it's it's actually a, a an awesome conversation because I think that it's so relevant to anyone that's coming up from New York to really have that consultation to understand not just what's driving the move, because that it could be flight, it could be fear, it could be all those things that that's pushing them. But if you're making the move, what are you willing to to give up, and what do you want to make sure that you don't give up? Because the towns in Fairfield County, kind of one by one, you can go through and say, yeah, if you're looking for bars and restaurants, it's probably here, here, or here. If you're looking for you know, access to New York still, it's here, here, or here. If you're looking for privacy and elbow room, it's here, here, or here. Yeah. So really having those consults is, uh, is important. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we have to be more knowledgeable about the greater area uh, than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, uh, the only Greenwich agents are going to be um, are going to be hurting because people are that used to be only Greenwich buyers are now going to be looking at you know Fairfield, Darien, Westport, all those on that line. Yeah, yeah so true, so true. Anything else about New York buyers or sellers that you want to talk about? Well, I'm also um, working with a New York buyer who was thinking about Lower Westchester, and I'm trying to. Um, you know, talk to them about Greenwich because of the property taxes in the school system where, you know, in, in Westchester for an equivalent property, they're going to be paying anywhere from like 20 to 35,000. I mean, there was one thing that they looked at. She, they, she was like, oh, this is not a bad price. I'm like, the property taxes are 50 grand. 
So that just knocked that out. So, you know, I looked at, um, at some Greenwich properties with her today online. And look, this one's 10, this is 12, you know, it's palatable for them and they can afford more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not for nothing. I mean, I, I say this, I say this from the perspective of being useful to, to anyone who is making a move because of our current environment, right? Don't, don't forget about the, uh, the graphs that exist online. If you, if you Google um, some specific words with respect to Westchester versus Fairfield County, you can get some charts and graphs about, about what we've experienced here versus what they've experienced there. And so if they're coming out of New York looking for someplace with a little more elbow room, Westchester, Westchester suffered more in the last 60 days than Fairfield County did. And so it's, yeah. again, I'm not, I'm not saying use scare tactics. That's not what I mean by any means. But in terms of giving them valid information, if that's important to them, truly the further away you get, I mean, our, our state as a whole state did better than, than any place else in the New York uh, tri-state area. So it's, yeah. it could be relevant. So don't forget those tools. Anybody have any questions for, um, for um, our panelists before we wrap things up? Uh, hold on, there's some chats here, let me see. Comments. No, no questions in the chat. Anybody with specific questions? Um, I just was wondering, do you, uh, you know, I've done this in the past and then I've stopped. Do any of y'all put them on auto emails for properties every single one mm -hmm. you do yeah do you find that they don't get inundated or do you just do new properties because i've had some people say gosh there's just so many coming in yeah i mean it, i just have it so they're getting one a day or one every week um as a, a person that was before i was in real estate i like to get notifications when properties were on sale in my neighborhood so i can kind of judge what's going on um, I would say after they, per after they buy once a week be enough, they don't need this, you know, the 8 AM in the morning and 8 PM at night emails. Right. Okay. Yeah. Great. Lisa, I personally set it up for them to get it once a day in the morning. And I think if they're getting inundated with, you know, massive amounts of listings, it, it just, it needs to focus back in on the criteria they're inputting for and, and, you know, what you're sending them, tighten that up and they'll get less. Okay. Right. I That's always like to Sorry. I always let them know that, you know, this might be, you might get a lot now. Let's adjust, take a look at it and we'll adjust the criteria. So there's a follow-up conversation. Um, do you guys send it through command or do you send it through the MLS? Command doesn't work right now. I do it through Boomtown. MLS. Okay. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, I mean, I also think it depends on their motivation level. If they're truly looking to buy a house, they're going to be on a hundred times a day themselves. So that you know that'll gauge. Um, if they're getting annoyed and frustrated, they're not. They're not as motivated. So, I think you know the benefit I have through Boomtown is I can adjust that weekly, daily, instantly, monthly, mm -hmm. um, which I'm. You probably can do in command I, I don't know but um that's gonna that's gonna show their motivation level because if they're out there ready to go they're gonna be on that thing every lunch break every every chance they get looking at inventory right yeah. i also send people my app um so they can look and you know with a little disclaimer about what it is and how to look the you know and, and you know if you're looking through zillow or something else look here it's in real time Okay. What I would, what I would uh, uh, say on that topic is uh, I, I, think, I think the idea that Kim put on the table of depends on their motivation level really, really is the answer. With all these, all these nurtures that we're talking about, you know, kind of uh, dripping the masses over time, it's an awesome tool to keep them uh, plugged in and, and with your name and face showing up on, on all the listings. The, the second someone raises their hand and says, I'd like to buy a house now, my personal opinion is now you need to be as, as on purpose and on, um, uh, on the system as they are. Because as Kim says, they're on there a bunch of times a day. If you're not on a bunch of times a day and you wait until the next morning for the new, the new nurture thing to go out, 
Well, they already know about the new property and want to go see it and they're calling. I, I just, I don't, I think you have to be cautious that you're not allowing too much automation with the real A buyers, too much automation to take over the, the, the role. Uh, Cause I think you might, you might miss things. And, and um, so I think once they become A's, once they raise their hand to become A's, you need to start really doing things almost manually again to make sure that you're um, creating urgency with them. So I do, I do both. They're all on listing alerts and I go shopping every day. Um, I look through all my people, if, like a condo comes on in the town they want, I send it to them personally and then text them, hey, yeah. just send me something might be interesting to you. Um, okay. Anyone that's active, I mean, you're, they're on top of it. If, yeah. it. if it's a BC buyer or they already bought, you know, they're, they're getting the automated stuff. Yeah, you have to know your inventory. I mean, a, it makes you look good if you've sent it to them and they say, oh, I saw that come on this morning. I was going to actually text you at lunch break. You know, if you're saying, hey, this one might be an opportunity for you or what do you guys think about this one? Or, hey, maybe if you get a minute on the way home from work. And, and I've admitted, I, I don't, I have, I'm not super familiar with that street. You know, maybe if you have a chance on your way home, take a drive by and, you know, if you like what you see, let's try to get in tomorrow night. Or, but I, I think it shows genuine care. If you look at that hot sheet, I mean, I, it's just habit for me. As soon as I wake up, you know, halfway through the day, dinner time, before I go to bed, I mean, I'm constantly just checking. And, you know, your A people are always going to be top of mind for you. So you're going to know, oh, you know, so-and-so was looking for contemporary under 550. Well, this just came on in New Fairfield for 510. And then you shoot it over. I've sold a lot of listings that way where I've found the house that they've been looking for. And it's, it shows that you are generally looking out for their best interest. So I will, um, I'll blind carb carbon copy myself on every MLS search for people that are getting the listings. So every morning when they get it at 8 AM or whatever it is, I'm looking at the same thing they see. And if I see something that, you know, we spoke about, or I think is, you know, going to fit them, then I'll send them a message later in the day. Hey, check this property out in your email. It might be a good fit. And you know, it gets, it gets response for sure, without a doubt. Excellent. Any other questions before we, we wrap for the afternoon? I only wanted to mention that I actually think that um, it is a really good idea when the agents advertise their own listings on Facebook for us, uh, because sometimes I actually, um, it is the first time when I hear about a property. When I hear that, let's say, Mary or Chris or Diane are, or Dan are advertising on the Facebook page. Cool beans, thank you. All right, guys, anything else you want to share with us before we uh, finish? Any other pearls of wisdom? There's plenty of business out there. You just got to keep, keep grinding. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're, this is what it's going to be like for a while. The hustle is real. Let's get it. Yeah. You know, I, I am, I'm fascinated uh, as, as to, to, to close that the, the conversation when I, when I look at, uh, when I look at our panelists today, um, I, I, I see four people who, um, have four very different backgrounds are in real estate for very different amounts of time, some, some very little, some much longer. Um, the, the, and the idea of um, just getting to business and, and recognizing that right now in order to make things happen, I mean, you heard the words, the grind, the hustle, the, you know, let's get after it. That, I mean, it, it, it's the, the mindset of the four of you um, is, is so fascinatingly similar. Right. And, and knowing the four of you solo, it, you're four very different people. And yet the mindset to me in the last 50 minutes has all been it's almost it's almost like you all rehearsed these conversations. I mean, yeah, we had a couple of questions that we passed around uh, to, to make sure that the, the conversation was on point. But nobody discussed answers beforehand. And so the, what, what I what I want to point out to everybody listening to this is this is a mindset first a work ethic second mm -hmm. and then all the rest of it comes when you decide that this is how you're going to make money right but you've got to make that decision first and all the all the places that we talked about to get leads are available to every single person not just the four people who were speaking today you just have to want it and you have to yeah. go and get it right 
Yeah, I think for uh, mind shift stuff um, in the busy season like it is now, um, it's really just about putting people in properties. Like it's really, um, it gets a little bit less emotional when people are really engaged and ready to go. Um, because there's people out there. They, I've, I've sold, you know, after showing two properties, I've sold one. <coughs> so it's really just picking them up and finding properties and putting them down and going to the next one. Um, and then having your transaction coordinator take care of the rest. Awesome. Don't get bogged down on the transaction. Yeah. Don't get bogged down, period, man. Let's just, let's just get after it. Guys, uh, panelists, thank you so much. As always, it is a pleasure to uh, to hear from you. We appreciate you taking the time to share your experiences with us. Uh, everyone else who was on the call, thank you for taking the time to plug in. Uh, hopefully you got some, uh, some great pearls that you can go and implement uh, this afternoon. With that, we will sign off for now. We will see you around 4.30 for the end of day wrap up. Uh, take care. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Take care.